In this video, I will show you how to make a setup on an S500 turbine shaft without having the pre-recorded data. In order to do this, you're going to need three items. A calculator, a caliper, and a scale. Basically, there are five easy steps in making the setup. First, the pre-settings. These are the numbers that we'll actually put into the front panel to begin our process. In the owner's manual for a turbine shaft, the generic settings are the calibration dial should be set at 800 that would be both the left side and the right side the plane dial should be set to 700 okay the plane dial for the left side plane dial for the right side Now the switch settings should be set I, B, B, that can stay in minus, X1 is the meter scaling, that can stay in X1, minus, the right side should be A, B, 0. Now the filter settings should be set depending on the size of the part. Since we're balancing a fairly large turbine shaft, you, you don't need to spin it as fast. So we want to spin it three, maybe 350 on the filter dial. Filter dial right here, 350. Now the motor speed dial should be set for the first part full counterclockwise. Now that we have set the um, dials and settings on the front panel, we're going to set the motor speed. In order to set the motor speed, we need to make sure that the part has an initial imbalance so we can actually set the speed. In order to do this, we need to place a fairly medium sized piece of wax on the turbine shaft either on the left or the right side but only have to do it on one of one or the other in this case we'll put it on the left side we'll actually put the motor on the part will start to rotate. We now increase the motor speed. At the same time you're increasing the motor speed, you want to hold down your left top button and take note of the meter. What we are looking for is the highest point we can get as we're increasing the motor speed. As the part increases, if you go all the way and the motor or the meter needle actually peaks out, you need to go to the bottom selection button where it will change the scaling. Continue to increase the meter or the motor speed, excuse me. You'll get to a point where if you continue increasing the motor speed, the meter actually starts to come back down. So what you need to do is decrease the motor speed, go back down, you'll see the motor or the meter needle actually come back up again. Okay. When you think you have it at the highest point on the meter, you can actually use the filter as kind of a 
fine tune to be able to get the meter needle to the highest point. Okay, just like that. Now you have set the motor speed correctly so you can actually stop the motor. Okay. The next step in the owner's manual would be balancing the part with temporary corrections. Now what this actually means is you need a part that is fairly closely balanced in order to get these numbers we're trying to achieve. So what we want to do at this point is we want to take the weight that we put on there to set the speed off and start the motor again and we're going to check to see if we get any kind of meter reading. At this point, if you're getting any kind of meter reading at all, where the strobe is actually firing a solid reading, so you, it appears the part's frozen and you can see a steady reading, then there's a chance it is probably out of balance. So we're going to see if it is. First thing you want to do is press the left top button. Take a look at the meter. You can see it is very low. This part appears to have no unbalance in it on the left correction plane. Now we're going to check the right side. We're going to actually press down on the right side button and see if we get any kind of reading. Again, it appears as if there is very little imbalance in this part. That's good. Stop the motor. Now the next step in the owner's manual once we have achieved getting a part closely balanced, which in this case we have one, we'll do the plane separation. Now in order to do the plane separation, what we will do is take a piece of this wax, doesn't matter the size again, about the size you use to set the speed initially, the bigger the part, the bigger the piece of wax you want to use, of course. Okay. For this large part, I'd use a piece about this size. This step is to actually physically tell the balancing machine that this is the left correction plane and this is the right correction plane. This is where you'll remove the material when you go to balance the wheel. So in this case, we're going to place this large piece of weight on the left correction plane. Now what this is going to do, it's going to throw the left side out of balance. We know this. But we want to check the right side and see if the right side is balanced. Because before we did, before we placed the weight on the left, both the left and the right side were balanced. So now that the weight is on the left, we will actually spin up the part. We will go ahead and press the left side to see the unbalance of the weight we just put on there. As you can see, a lot of weight. We'll go down to the bottom scale. Okay, it's at about 30 on the meter. Now the right side, we did not place any weight on the right. So let's check the right side unbalance by pressing the right side. It appears that there is some unbalance now on the right side. So obviously what is happening is that way we placed on the left is leaking over to the right side. So what we do is we, while we're taking the right side reading, still pressing down on the right green button, I will start to move this right plane separation dial. As you can see, the meter went lower. Now let me go the other direction to show you what happens if I go the wrong way. It is getting worse. We need to get down to the lowest reading we can by turning this 
style or any combination of the A, B, I, O switches. As you can see, if I had that combination, it would be way out of balance again on the right side. So that would not be correct. So I would start switching these three switches and turning this dial each time and one combination will give you that lowest reading which means the right side is now ignoring the left side correction plane. Now you can turn the motor off. Now the next step would be to take the weight off of the left correction plane that we had placed there for that procedure using the same piece of weight place it on the right correction plane okay in this case I'm attaching it to this blade but it is overhanging onto the nose which is my right correction plane now what I want to do is spin up the part and of course you will see that the right side is now out of balance because I put the weight on the right so if I press this button as you can see way out of balance now what I want to do is check my left as you can see a large unbalance so what I need to do now is while I'm holding down that left correction is I'm going to turn the right plane and or change the switches on this side to get my lowest reading possible on the meter. Let's go this direction. It gets worse so I know to go back the other direction. I'm running out of dial and it's still up about two. Let me try changing the IO to the O position and then go back the other direction and see if we can get any lower. No, it's about the same. So it's right at the end of that potentiometer. So the I position in this case, or the O, the O position gets it lower at about 820 on the plane. So we're going to leave those switches in that position. The rule of thumb is you want to get the reading as low as you possibly can. Turn the motor off. The next step is going to be our calibration, which happens to be the last step and sometimes the most confusing to people. For this step you need a calculator, a caliper, and a scale that will weigh in grams. Every part has a balancing tolerance. Balancing tolerance for a part this size is approximately 0 0.055 gram inch. That will be the first part of our formula. 0 0.055. If you don't know a balancing tolerance for the part that you have into balance, pick a tolerance of a part that you do know that's about the same size and go ahead and use that balancing tolerance. 0 0.055 gram inch. Now the first thing you need to do is weigh up a piece of weight that's at least 10 times heavier than this number which in this case would be 0.55 gram inch or higher. So you can round it off. On this gram scale right here we will weigh up a piece that is 0.6 piece of this wax .6. The next step is on the left correction plane first. We're going to place this piece of weight on this correction plane. It can be any radius or it can be at any point across as long as it's on that correction plane. But 
you do need to measure the distance you are at because that's the next part of our formula. So if you use a caliper for example, we can measure out the distance from the center point out and we use that number. In this case it's 1.6. Now the weight we're using is a 0.6. So on our calculator we take the 0.6 it's the piece of weight that we're using multiplied by the 1.6 radius we placed it at equals 0.96 and just divide that number by your balancing tolerance which in this case is 0 0.055 and that will equal in this case 17.4 and it gives me a bunch of other numbers after it but you can just round it off to 17 that would be just fine that is 17 on the meter so basically what it is telling you is that weight placed at that radius is approximately 17 times heavier than the balancing tolerance of 0 .055. So if we were to set the meter for 17, that sets 0 .055 gram inch to equal 1. So now what we do what we do is we turn on the motor, spin it up. This is the left side now. So we press down the left bottom button because we want it to equal 17 on the meter. Okay. It's reading about 30. So with this calibration dial, turn it until we get 17 on the meter. Now one is now equivalent to 0 0.055 gram inch. Now the next thing we'll do is take that calibration weight off the left side. Again, place it on the right side. Correction, I'm gonna stick it on this blade but let it hang over. But again, you need to measure out the distance from the center point of the part to the wax. So in other words, the radius. In this case, I placed it at 1.5. So we actually redo the formula. 0.6 multiplied by 1.6 divided by, I'm sorry, multiplied by 1.5 in this case. So it's just slightly different. So take the 0.6 is the weight that we weighed up, multiplied by 1.5 which is the radius we placed it at equals 0.9. Divide that by your balancing tolerance, 0 0.055 equals 16.3. We'll set it for 16. Okay. So actually, turn the motor on, pull the right button down, check out the meter reading, you should be 16. Just in the right calibration dial until you're at 16. Now you have all the settings for this S500 turbine wheel. That is the numbers you would write down for the future. The next thing we can do on this part, we're going to take off the piece of weight, calibration weight. If you did have to add any other temporary correction weights before we started the procedure because the wheel was already out of balance, you would take all the weights off now. So now there's no weights on this part whatsoever. I know that one is equal 
to .055 gram inches on the left and the right sides. So what I'm going to do is press the left side top scale button. I'm way less than one. This wheel's balanced down to almost nothing. The right side, same thing, press down, same thing, balanced down to almost nothing. Okay, when it's balanced down that close, it's going to happen. So you're not going to get steady location on the part. If this part was out of balance, just like when we added the calibration weight, When you spin it up, and it is out of balance, show you the meter. This is the top button, so if it goes over 10, go to the bottom. So this piece of weight threw it out about 15 times the balancing tolerance. Now, when you have some kind of markings on the part, The part will appear frozen as if it's not moving. When your motor speed is set correctly for that peak reading on a balanced part, you will see that wax straight up 12 o'clock. Now, if there was no wax on this part right now and it was showing steady like that with your markings being frozen, you would stop the part. Put it back to where it was when it was spinning and remove the material or grind right at 12 o'clock. I hope this helps everybody in learning how to balance or make your own setup on a West Coast balancing machine, the turbine shaft.